Hey, St. Luke, St. Luke family, our well-wishers, St. Luke friends. It's another day that the Lord has made, and uh, I will rejoice and be glad. We're here at the St. Luke Christian Church, where God is with us seeking to save. God want to use you during this season. God want to use you to be a blessing to someone. It doesn't mean anything so extravagant. It may be a speak. It may be um, a hi. It may be a how you doing. It may be just letting people know when, the, you know, when when God speaks to you in spirit, and someone is down. Maybe just knowing, hey, God, God loves you. Most of us don't realize that we don't live on islands. Whatever someone is going through, others have endured. That doesn't help at the time, but it certainly doesn't help either to feel like you're on that island by yourself, that you and you alone, for whatever reason. And it certainly doesn't help when you feel like I don't deserve this. I shouldn't be here. I don't know why you know we're going to talk about that a little bit because the lord laid it in my spirit earlier today uh, to change the whole direction of what it was we've been talking about praise thanksgiving all those things but there's somebody out there hurting there's somebody out there on an island someone feels that god has abandoned them and don't understand and don't know why and can't get answers and can't quite get it together you've been doing the best you can to be the best you can in service for god amen amen following as best you can and get hit in the gut with blow after blow after blow and and, and i, I on, on 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 that that that, that place of uh, trying to figure out lord Lord, you know, why me? I, I don't know who it is. I pray that uh, the Spirit has uh, guided them uh, to make contact with this uh, conversation today because it's going to be short, but it's going to be powerful. I, I I pulled up some stuff late up last night, and this was just dropped in my spirit. And the handle on it was, what do you do when God makes trouble for you? And I didn't say anything about allows trouble. That occurs also. And it occurs kind of in this story I'm going to deal with a little bit today as well. But when, 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 when God seems to motivate, God is motivating trouble, instigating, throwing you under the bus, seemingly. And that was just dropped heavily in my spirit. And I feel it's necessary. I feel that someone... Um, in, in somebody, somebody. So, so stay with us. Um, don't don't leave because the person may not be directly. The people may not be directly on with us today. I need you to get this message so you can help someone else. What do you do when it seems like the Almighty has, has said, "Put up your dukes." We we're, we're gonna we're gonna pray. We thank God for. An opportunity to come to you, but I want to get through this little word because I believe it's going to be a powerful word because someone needs this word and it may not be anyone listening, but I need you to gather this word because you're going to have to share this word with someone who feel like I might as well just throw in the towel. I'm in a, I'm in a ring with, you know, someone I can't beat. He's beating me down. And I don't know why. He's normally in my corn. He's normally my cut man. He's normally uh, giving me an advice on how to do my thing against the enemy, but it seems like my cut man is cutting me up. We thank God. We thank God for an opportunity to come into your homes in this time, and prayerfully a word will be given you that you will be a blessing to someone else with this, with this word. And we're going to pray and get right into it. Oh, man, it won't be long. I promise you it won't be long. I know, and I'm glad to be in your homes. And I want to remind you, it's, it's powerful to have a homegrown relationship with God. God, that was good. Thank you, Lord. A homegrown relationship with God. I've been around here, and people have been talking about organic and I, I've tasted food that was bought in the st store that was mass produced. And I've tasted food from gardens. And it, it, the difference is beyond explanation. The homegrown is always better. If, if, if a relationship with God is rooted um, in you through home, 
to to home. And I'm, I gotta say this to all of our young people. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching cities after cities. I'm watching crime wake up in very small rural communities, shootouts and shoot ups. And, and what what I was talking to one of my uh, teachers today, uh, our daughter, about was the fact that uh, we didn't have all the other stuff, but we had a homegrown relationship with God. We didn't depend upon the local church to do that. There were some things we did at home, but we're living in a time when girlfriend and boyfriend are trying to raise babies. I didn't say mamas and daddies. I said girlfriend and boyfriends are trying to raise baby, and the outcome on the streets is horrendous. It, it takes a mama and a daddy. Whether you married or not, you got to be daddy and mama to try to raise a, a baby to be a citizen of the kingdom. But girlfriends and boyfriends have tackled this issue, thinking more about themselves as opposed to about how this child. I, I, that's a whole nother subject. That's a whole nother subject. I got something in my, uh, on my plate I have to deal with. I'll deal with that a little bit, a little bit later. All right, listen, we thank God. We want you to gather around your altars at home. Oh, yeah, thank you, Lord. Gather around your altars at home, and we're going to... We're going to pray and we're going to write into this word because this word is going to bless and be a benefit to someone. It's not something they have not heard. But every now and then we, we need a boomerang word. Word we throw not to come back and bust up us, us upside the head because we need it. So, so whatever your prayer requests or uh, whatever your needs are, remember everyone on our, our list of people to pray for. Remember them. In, in our prayer tonight, lay, lay, your, lay your situation, your circumstance or circumstances on the altar of your heart. And we're going to ask God to lay his hand on your heart. God, we thank you. We love you. We give you glory, honor, Father. We give you praise. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. It is a true. We want your will to be done. On earth as is in heaven, and we know that in heaven they're praising you, they're, they're glorifying you, they're exalting you, they're bowing before you. We want your will. Let your will be done. God, help us to understand that we can realize that at the altars in our home, we can bow, we can praise, we can give you glory. Your will will be done, God. Let your name be glorified, be glorified in Jesus in his will, in Jesus in his works, in Jesus in his way. They glorify you. They show us, oh God. Who you, who you are. Help us to imitate. Help us to try to, to let others see you in, in our ways, in, in our words, in, in, in the way we be, help, help us to live in a way, God, that others can see your Holy Spirit at work in our life and in our living. We pray for all of those, Father, who um, names are on our sick list and those who may not be there. We pray, Father, that you would Bless um, the family of, of, of those who may have um, left us. Bless. Uh, hold them in the hollow uh, of your hand. Bless sister, sister uh, Michelle Woods who lost her uh, brother uh, recently. God, I pray that you just hold that family. Those who are convalescent, those who are in therapy, I pray, God, that you hold them. Hold uh, Brother Mingo, hold, hold Sister Liz, hold them in your hand, God. Brother Hall, uh, Brother Charlie Burris, hold Brother Thomas, hold uh, Sister Patricia Flowers, hold Mother Ellison, hold uh, Mother Foreman, hold them in the hollow of your hand, oh God. Hold our seniors, keep them, Father. Let, let them know you're there with them. Let not their hearts be troubled. God, we pray for our young people who are um, on the streets doing some horrendous things, especially our young uh, males, God, with guns and violence, God. Help us. Show us how to intervene. Show us how to show them a different and a better way, God. Help us. Help us to care. And help us, oh God. God, I don't know what's on the altar of each heart. It's under the sound of my voice, but I know you know. I know you're able Touch, heal, and deliver. Bring peace in homes right now. In Jesus' name, do it, Father. 
You are God who makes a way out of no way. And someone is sitting inside a situation. They see no way out. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that they will walk by faith and not and not by sight. Help each of us to know that the part we must do and the part we must play, though it's heavy it may be, it may be. That's all we can do. So often, Father, we're trying to change someone else when all we can do is change ourselves. God, I pray for peace in every home right now. I pray that every little child are able to see love between uh, those who are their examples, those models. I pray that our adults are so careful because there's going to be some confusion from time to time, but they're so careful that, that they don't, don't allow the babies to see. And no, they, they don't scare them with the foolishness. God, I ask you do it in Jesus' name. I say thank you, God. I thank you. We thank you. You've done, you've done so much. Father, I pray for our churches. I pray that we don't get so caught off with the crowd and with the street that we're so concerned with the number of people who uh, we can get into the bill and instead of the number of people who can get the word and we can get the word into the few God. I, I pray that we don't become concerned with popularity. And we don't become concerned with competing with others about size of stuff, bill and, and all the crazy stuff, God, that our whole purpose be about being a place where your Holy Spirit resides and, and dwells and be a place where we can love the love less and the lost, the left out, the left behind, that people can feel your love when they interact with us, God. Let us be that. Now, God, I pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know who this word is for, God, but I, I know you, you sent a word for someone, Father. So use me. Be, be my be my voice. God, I get myself out of the way now. I say thank you for all the blessing. Thank you for deliverance right now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Go ahead, hurry up. Go ahead, hurry up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. If you believe God's going to do it for you right now, just say thank you, God. I thank you. You can reach over the mountain of your trouble and get some of the joy after the relief. Bring it back to this time and praise God for what God is going to do. Trouble all in front of you. Don't know where you're going to go. I need you to, by faith, just reach over the mountain of your trouble. Grab some of the joy that's going to occur when God has wiped that thing away or God has helped you to get over. God has pushed you over that place. Grab some of that joy and bring and have some of that joy. Now look at your trouble and tell your trouble. You don't know who my thank you, Lord. You don't know who my God is. Go to Job chapter 23 just for a minute. I want to talk to you because the Lord dropped this in my spirit. I don't share those things with you very often. But this morning, early this morning, 2 o'clock. Um, what do you do when the troublemaker in your life is God? Job 23. Just a few verses um, that I'm going to read. I'm going to not read all the chapter. You can do that in your leisure. Job chapter 23. You know I read from the King James Version most of the time. I'm doing it right now. Job 23. And remember this is set up from the perspective that um, for some, someone who is, 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 is in a relationship with God right now that feels as though God has abandoned or God has turned his back. In fact, God has turned on me and it's hard to hold on because the things that happened shouldn't have happened Job chapter 23 let's let's read it it says Job answered and said um, even today is my complaint bitter my stroke is heavier than my groaning Job said I'm complaining but I'm not complaining as much as I should my stroke is Heavier than my complaint. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would set my cause before him and fill my mouth with argument. Job was ready to argue his case. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him, 
so should I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. Backwards, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hides himself on the right hand that I can not that I cannot see him, but he knows the way that I go, that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Verse 15 says, Therefore am I troubled at his presence when I consider I am afraid of him, but God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubles me. You know, I've, I've used titles for this text over the years. One of the ones that I remember uh, better than anything else is picked out to be picked on, picked out to be picked on. And let's just stay there. Let me just say, some, some of you have been picked out. Some of us have been picked out. And we can expect if we've been picked out, we're going to be picked on. We've been picked out by God. And, and uh, often that pick out is displayed by favor. That, that To be picked out is, is to be displayed by favor. Job had great favor. Everything he touched prior to this experience grew. I mean, his investments, everything was rocking and right until the Lord picked him out and allowed the devil to pick on him. Now, I just feel it in my spirit, I got to say this. This idea that favor without folly is non-biblical. Every time you are favored, the devil has a meeting with your name on it and creates folly to try um, to diminish the favor. It's, it's, it's a biblical thing. Everyone that God seems to favor have to deal with, with folly. Adam and Eve, made by God's hand, God favored them and, and said, it's very good. The devil comes along to create folly. Abel, Cain's brother, favor of God, is killed by his brother. He alone comes father. Joseph had favor of God and have to deal with his brothers who hated him. Father, favor is a way of God picking you out. This man was picked out to be picked on. Satan challenged, if you read the entire story, Satan challenged to God was that because he had favored Job. Job was doing his ministry well, wherever that was. Job, Job was doing, he was, he was, he was, he was praising, he was um, doing whatever ministry gifts, he was doing it well. And Satan said the only reason he's doing that is because of the favor. I don't know who I'm talking about, but 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 it, it is interesting and it's concerning for me that we um, pray for the favor, we desire the favor, but we start to fail when folly shows up. And 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 when you're in favor, folly is no. Just you know, little little you know, chip. No, no, it's a blow in the gut that nobody can feel, and the pain stings, and it doesn't go away, and then it gets sore, and it lasts for a while. But it come, as Peter would say, to test the genuine nature of your faith. So here Job is in this chapter. And notice what Job is doing. Now, Job, Job is a good man because God said so. That makes it so. I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody is going through some stuff. And there's a question mark about where God is. Job had that going on right here in the text that I read. Job was wondering, where is God? 
Job said, I'm actively looking for him because I need to have a word with him. I want to I wanna argue. I want to talk to him. I want to talk to him about this mess. I, I've, been, I've been doing my ministry. I've been sacrificing. I've been serious about it. And all this stuff has hit me right in my gut, and it hurts, and it's not fair. I need, I need to find him. Job here says, I need to talk with the Lord. I'm not talking about no um, routine prayer. Job said, I have an argument. Now, I want you to understand that Job's argument had to do with Job's idea or Job's worldview of how God works. The way God works. We think God works like man. So when you're in man's favor and you're on man's side and you man like you and, and man is able to help you, he'll network to make sure you get this and get that and get this. It's understood because you're doing things to, to make sure that man is pleased. And, and, and you get the promotion, you get the job, and you get all the, you know, all the accolades and all that kind of stuff. That's the way the system works. For the most part, it doesn't work that way for everyone, but for the most part, that's the way the system works. You, you did your thing. and God doesn't necessarily work the way. His ways are not our ways. Job, Job had humanities on his back because Satan did not just challenge Job. He challenged everyone who worshiped. Everyone who believed, he, he told God, I have an estimation. I estimate that if you don't uh, do Job favors, Job won't serve you. And Job, at this point in verse, in chapter 23, he's trying to get audience with God. And he tells you how he looks. He says, um... In the first place, he says, I'm moaning and groaning, but that, that's not even expressing what's really happening in my life. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I, Job said, my groan is smaller than how I'm being beat down. God said, I'm not even complaining like I ought to be. I need the audience with the Lord, because I, I know he's righteous, I know he's just, I know he's kind, and I know he doesn't do any wrong, I know he's loving, so I, I'm not groaning like, like this thing that's happening to me, because I need to talk with him, and Job, Job, Job lets you know um, that he trusted God, if he can if he can, he said, if I can convince God, if God can hear this story, man, if God, if God can hear what's going on with me, he lighten up this low. Oh, God, help me right there, God. Spoke in my spirit. Someone needs the load lifted right now. Thank you, Jesus. Been in the storm too long. Joe, Joe, Joe says, my complaint is not as heavy as what's going on. Then he goes down further um, and shows go, Joe wants to complain first. He, he wants, wants to complain. He says, then Job decides, I need to look for him. And he says, I am. He says, uh, I don't see him in the future going forward. Uh, he's not there. Uh, I go back. I can't perceive he's he's there either. It's on the left hand side, that's where he's working, but I can't tell what he's doing. So let me pause. Stay right there. In your situation, God is at work. You just can't behold, can't see what God is doing. Thank you, Jesus. My my brother, my sister, I tell you right now, God is working in that hurt, in that traumatic, in that painful, in that terrible situation that you are enduring. God is at work, I promise you. He is at work. Don't let the crazy thoughts 
clog up your mind. Your father, your God is at work in that messed up situation that, that, that you're dealing with. God's at work. You just can't see it. Job says, I, I, I'm seeking him, but I can't see him. I'm complaining, but I haven't gotten to a place where he can hear me. I'm seeking him, but I, I can't see him. And then he says, on, on, on the right hand, uh, I can't even see God delivering me from the stuff. I can't even perceive God delivering. That's the right hand, the right hand, the right hand of power. I, that's how God works the situation out. The right hand, right hand of God. So I don't even see God. I see no way out. Then Job says something interesting. He's regaining his strength in God. And he says, uh, when he's through with me, though, I shall come forth with pure gold. And here's the lesson. Here's the lesson. In order to get pure gold, um, the person making the gold have to turn up the heat so the impurities will boil up to the top so it can be separated from the gold. God, God is not troubling us or does not trouble us for naught, for nothing. God troubles us to make us better. In, in, in that process, we may lose some folks. May lose some hair, but, but the heat is turned up so the impurities will uh, be cooked up to the top and, 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 and separated from the gold. I don't know what you've gone through. I, I really don't, but the heat's been turned up. The impurities are going to spill off, and when you come out of this, you're going to be absolutely better. God is not troubling you for naught. You were picked out to be picked on because for some of us, we become complacent in the place that we're in. We think we're okay. You know, I'm good enough, but that God has some work to do on you. And he had to take you through this process, turn up the fire so he could get some more impurities out because God want to mighty lose you. Can I tell you this? When, when you come forth, it'll be as pure gold. You'll be able to take the situation that was used to destroy you and be a blessing to someone else. Sometimes you can't tell people about stuff that you haven't been through. Somebody needed you to endure this so you can help them. Help me here, Holy Ghost. Somebody needed you to hold on until uh, the dredges, to, until the impurities are, are out of you so you can embrace them and hold them and comfort them when they are going through. Job says this word, when he threw with me, I'll be better. Say that word. When God's through with this, I'll be better. And he goes down and says, uh, he's troubling it. The Almighty's troubling me. When the Almighty troubles you, he's troubling you to make you better and he's going to get you out of trouble real quick. I don't know who I'm talking to. God dropped it in my spirit. I had to talk about it. Hmm? Don't know what you're going through. And it may not be you. There may be a neighbor. There may be a friend. Maybe a loved one. Maybe a coworker. Who said the Almighty is troubling you. What did I do to deserve this? And he, he, if you talk to people long enough, they have already come up with some things they've done. They still can't handle why me, God. Been punched in the gut after trying to do everything you thinking was right, but punched in the gut. Pain and sore. And it's lasting. It's bringing tears and, and crazy thoughts to your mind. But you've been picked out to be picked on. Can I close by telling you this? God knew that Job could handle what was coming Job's way. It wasn't a possibility. For God to lose with Job. What about you? Can God depend on 
you to keep praising. Keep praying. Though things are not all right. Though troubles on every hand. Though you're hurting in the core of your heart. Though you're confused about why. I want you to think about this. When God gets through, you shall come forth. It's pure gold. And he's going to give you double for your trouble. It's that kind of God. Father, we thank you. Father, I don't even know, have a clue who you're speaking to, but thank you. Thank you for intervening. Thank you, God, for intervening. Now, Father, I pray that this message will reach where you intended. I pray that it benefits as you intended. I hope that we will get to know that favor attracts folly. And now, God, I pray that you make the message effective, that someone will back away from the ledge. And continue to serve you in spirit and in truth. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise now in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, I've done my part. If you heard this word and you say, hey, you know what? I want to give my life. I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. You can do that. You can do that right now. If you want to do that, you've not been baptized. What I want you to do is just repeat after me and understand what I'm saying. Uh, if you're not giving your life to God, if you've not confessed him as your savior, then you're what we call a sinner. So many people look at what we do as making us sinners. But sinners is who we are. We're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But the tendency, the repentance is there. Waiting on an opportunity. So would you repeat after me? If you've never been baptized, never confessed Christ as your Savior, you can do that right now by just repeating after me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I confess Christ. I accept Christ as my dead, buried, and resurrected Savior. I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart on me as his child. Amen. I welcome you to the household of faith. Amen. Go to the website, St. Luke Christian Church, hsv.org, and follow the menu. Join us and give us your information. Someone will reach out to you as soon as possible. If you already belong to a worship experience, but you're moving around and you want to uh, join this, join the family here, St. Luke. Arms are wide open for you. Go to the website, give us your information. We'll reach out to you as soon as possible. To all of you, we've not opened in live church yet, but for some of you who have just that urge and need to say, I just need to sit in the fellowship periodically, 9.30 Sunday morning, we are open. We just go through all the 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 protective kind of things to make sure that we are protected so listen if you have that urge get up get yourself together come on out at 9 30 and we we will worship together listen until we meet again listen don't let the pandemic paralyze you certainly don't park your praise or your prayers and pastor johnson here till we meet again <laughs>